Can you get two cups of water to boil in under five minutes with an alcohol stove system? Let's find out. But first, what's going on backpackers? My name is Dave and this channel is called Off Grid. And on this channel, I like to talk about all things backpacking, hiking, camping, and gear. And today I've got some nerd science and nerd math coming at you. It's gonna be very technical. Well, thank you very much, I'm fatter. So if you don't like math and don't like numbers, just move on over to the next video because that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And uh, today I'm gonna be talking about um, an alcohol stove system, basically going to be revisiting the alcohol stove system. So um, for sort of like a prerequisite to this video, I'm gonna throw up a couple of videos up here for uh, my alcohol versus gas stove system video to give you a better idea of which one is better. And then I'm also gonna be throwing up a video that uh, I made that was basically asking the question, is the jet boil stash worth it? And um, I got a little bit of a surprise for you guys. <laughs> I got the jet boil stash. Now, before you uh, end up calling me a hypocrite, and before you end up saying, hey, I thought you were never gonna end up buying that pot, um, let's go to that past footage. With everything else that I kind of like threw at you guys today, I can't really say uh, that I'm gonna be thinking about buying this system anytime soon, unless the price point comes down by about half or more. Okay, so I did say that if I were to ever get the price point down on the Jet Boil Stash pot, then I would definitely consider picking one up. Well, thanks to my buddy Jeremiah Stringer at his channel, Jeremiah Stringer Hikes. He was able to hook me up and I was able to get just the pot. I didn't get the whole system, but I got the pot here um, from Jeremiah for uh, right around that halfway mark or that halfway price point. So special thanks goes out to him for providing this pot for me today and making this test possible. So what am I gonna do today in today's uh, video? I am really excited about this one, guys, because uh, I feel like I've cracked the code to making um, your water boil in the backcountry as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So really excited to share this one with you guys today. Uh, but I want to get some of this stuff out of the way real quick. So if you want to head on over to the time trials, I'll post a timestamp right here of uh, when I get those going. But um, I also wanted to um, reference a video that I referenced in one of my other videos as well. So um, in my jet boil stash video, I ended up referencing a fellow YouTuber by the name of Paul Messner and the time trials that he did in his video. And I have to do a quick correction right here right now too to basically say that um, I was wrong on one point in my last video and originally I had thought that Paul was doing a boil speed test um, using an alcohol stove system and a mock stash, so not the stash pot, but one that was pretty similar in design, had a heat exchanger on the bottom or that flux, or that flux ring technology. And um, I thought that he was using about two cups of water, but it turns out that Americans don't know the rest of the metric system and he ended up using 400 milliliters of water, which in turn is pretty close to 14 ounces instead of 16 ounces, which is the standard two cups. So I did the math on that and the correction here is that originally Paul was able to get his 400 milliliters of water to boil in about four minutes and 37 seconds with his heat exchanger pot. But if you do the math on that and you add two extra ounces of water to get two solid cups in, it winds up being about five minutes and 15 seconds to bring two cups of water to a boil. Now, I was using that as the golden standard. Um, as soon as I figured out the math on that, I was like, all right, can I beat that time? Can I get it even lower? And I thought that I could. So what I did for today's rounds of testing, and I'm gonna be posting B-roll in here to show you guys all the different tests that I have. I'm gonna tell you the four different types of tests that I'm gonna do in today's video as well in a little bit. But um, I was pondering that question, can I beat his time? And the reasons why I thought I could beat his time, I actually have three reasons that um, I thought could uh, end up beating his time. The first of which is in Paul's test, he actually didn't end up putting this piece on right here, which is just the clear plastic lid that the jet boil stash comes with. He was boiling water inside, right, in a controlled environment, but he didn't have the lid on, which um, is a simple thing to just use to make sure that you're heating up 
up water as quickly as possible, right? You want to make sure that you're trapping as much of the heat in. So that was the first reason that uh, I thought I could end up beating his time. The second reason why I think that I was going to be able to beat his time was because I think that I'm using a more efficient stove. Now I have the uh, Tokes siphon burner. I'm like looking around to see if I have it like readily available and it's just off screen and in a case. So uh, I'm not going to show you right now, but I've shown it in other videos and I can post a picture up here to show you guys. Um, in Paul's video, he was using the tried and true Trangia burner uh, stove, which I think is made out of brass or something like that. I could be wrong, but uh, my Tokes titanium uh, burner is a siphon burner, they call it, but it's basically just another stove. But I did notice that a lot of other alcohol stoves take a while to bloom, which basically means when you initially light an alcohol stove, the flame is blue, and then it will eventually turn to that orangey yellow type of look to it, which basically means that it's primed or prepped and ready to go. And I noticed that with my Tokes titanium burner or stove that it basically blooms in like five seconds or less. It's insanely quick to, uh, to light up and get ready. So I can basically just light it, get my pot, and just sit it on top and it's ready to go. So I'm assuming here, because it's quicker to bloom, I didn't have a heat gun on it to, to test like how hot it was compared to like the Trangia. But I'm assuming that it is quicker to bloom, that it's a little bit more forceful and it's a little bit hotter of a stove. So that was my guess too, as far as like a guesstimate goes. And then the third reason why I thought I was gonna be able to hopefully beat his time would be that I'm using the Caldera Cone. Now, I've talked about this before. I've got a first look on it. I'll post it right up here if you wanna take a better look at it. But it's basically just a thin piece of aluminum that goes in a cone shape and goes right around your pot and uh, literally goes like right up to the lip, right up here where the, um, the the edge of the pot meets kind of like the lid and um, it is something that is a great insulator and I talked about this before I'm gonna recap here with my results that I'm gonna be talking about real quick but let's get into um, the four different tests and the four different results that I was able to achieve in this video for you guys today I'm gonna start with kind of like the lower end and then build all the way up to the grand finale here but the four tests that I'm gonna do is basically two different uh, sets of trials and um, two of the tests are gonna basically be with this stand right here, which is the Vargo uh, windscreen and stove stand. It's just uh, a simple piece of aluminum here that you can mold to a lot of different shapes. You can do like a diamond. If you have a really wide pot, you can kind of do like a hexagon shape. Um, but basically all it is is a stove stand. Before I was calling it a windscreen, but it's kind of useless as a windscreen and I figured this out when I was going over to the Channel Islands for an overnighter. Try to use it in mildly windy conditions and it basically rendered my alcohol stove system useless and was basically the reason why I decided to do this um, test to begin with and what kind of you know started the wheels in motion. The second set of tests that I'm going to perform is going to be with that Caldera cone. So basically I have the two different kinds of pots. I got the stash right here and then I also have my Tokes titanium. This is the 750 milliliter pot and it's also the one that I bought the Caldera cone for and um, if you're not familiar with the Caldera cone system they make the cones specific to a certain kind of pot so I'll talk about that in a hot second as well. But these are the two different pots that I'm going to end up using for my um, time trials today as well. So result number one here, I'm not going to do it in real time right now. I'm going to throw in some B-roll footage for you guys to look at for the different times um, and the different trials that I'm looking at here. But result number one, I'm going to say I'm going to be using the Tokes titanium pot with that Vargo stand. And I ended up getting, this shouldn't come as any surprise if you guys have been following me for a little bit of time now but uh, because I've already basically mentioned that in another time trial, but with um, the Vargo stand, the Tokes titanium pot, two cups of water at basically like cold, just out of the faucet, um, I got that to a rolling boil in about seven minutes. Now under optimal conditions, that actually rings true. But again, like I said, if you're in the field and you got some wind, it's gonna render the Vargo system pretty much useless. To the, oh, let's get over to the second result now, and I'm still using the Tokes Titanium Pot, but this time I'm gonna switch over to the Caldera Cone, and I think I've mentioned this in a video in the past as well. Maybe not, maybe this is the first time that uh, I'm kinda launching this out there, but 
It is amazing, guys. The Caldera Cone is a super heat efficient stove system, and I got that down to about five minutes and 30 seconds, which is a reduction of around 20%. But more importantly there, the thing to note is that the Caldera Cone is amazing in the wind. It has, it comes up super high on the pot, and um, it definitely acts as a heat insulator so that the majority of the heat that might come up and around the pot basically stays at the top of the cone because again it's hugging that lip and uh, or the upper portion of your pot so that um, it's not really losing that much heat at all now the um, two other results if you haven't guessed already are going to be with the jet boil stash pot and then i'm going to be putting it on the vargo stand and then the other one is going to be with my caldera cone but first the first thing that I want to mention with the um, Jetboil stash here is that I uh, was using it with the Caldera cone, which again is perfectly fitted to my Tokes pot, but the diameter of both of these is different. I don't know if you can tell on screen, but this one here with the stash is definitely a lot wider than the Tokes pot as far as the overall diameter, but it basically means that my Caldera cone does not fit perfectly around my Jetboil stash, which means that it's not as efficient as it can be because um, I'm I'm not able to put that dovetail connection in on the cone to really lock in as much of the heat as possible. So instead of getting a cone that goes all the way around it and locks in, I guess, 100% of the heat or possible heat or close to it, you'll end up getting somewhere around, um, I don't know, you can see in the footage, it's somewhere around two thirds the overall space to three quarters, something like that. But the back end is pretty much open um, for the most part. I'm getting a lot of coverage around it with the cone, but it's not as much as it can be. I'm gonna have to research different stuff off of Caldera's website. Maybe I'll pick up a cone that fits the diameter of this jet boil pot a little bit better um, or more perfectly. But let's get over into the time results now of the jet boil stash and the Vargo stand. And um, I'm gonna throw that up on screen for you guys to look at here. It's definitely going to be an overall reduction. And again, that basically has to deal with this little piece down here, which is Jetboil's famed flux ring, um, or flux capacitor. I call it flux capacitor because it kind of just sounds like back to the future, right? But uh, it's basically just a heat exchanger. It's this little thing at the bottom that uh, spreads out the heat as much as possible and um, really works to distribute the heat at the bottom of the pot um, more equally so that um, the heat doesn't really like flame up or kind of come around the, the pot like it does with the Tokes pot. There's a lot more heat that kind of gets wasted with a flat uh, bottom like this compared to one that has the heat exchanger. So let's get over to result number four now, and it is uh, one that I'm super excited to mention to you guys here today. I haven't seen anybody else really do a time trial on this one, but again, it is going to be the Jetboil Stash Pot with the Caldera Cone, and I was able to get two cups of water to boil, guys, in four minutes and 32 seconds. That, to me, is just insane. So. In one of my previous videos, I had mentioned that uh, with an ounce of alcohol in my Tokes Titanium Siphon Burner, it would burn for about 11 minutes. So if you cut that in half, especially with the Caldera Cone, which is really great in the wind, I don't really worry as much about having to refuel or, or worry about it kind of going out or anything. Um, it's solid, it's rock solid in the wind. So if you cut that in half, right, if I get 11 minutes, you cut it in half, to, it gets you to about five and a half minutes, right? But at four minutes and 32 seconds, I think that means that I can now safely bring two cups of water to a boil with about a half an ounce of alcohol. So super nerdy, uh, I know. Um, if you're not really into gas or alcohol stove systems, this might not mean that much to you, but for me, it is huge. I was like, you know, super excited to find out that I was able to get two cups of water to boil as efficiently as I could in this jet boil stash pot. So uh, what that basically means is I can, you know, on a standard weekend trip, I only usually have about potentially four boils anyway. Um, so I have a little four ounce uh, bottle. Let me show you right here. Ah. So the one that I use right here, it's a, it's a four ounce capacity and I have my little measuring cup here. Um, that basically means that with half an ounce to bring two cups of water to a boil, I can have about uh, eight boils on uh, just this bottle alone. 
which basically means I can boil about 16 cups of water um, pretty accurately and consistently um, with uh, this system that I have right now. So um, I am extremely excited about this one again, guys. Um, thanks so much for watching this week. If you have a more fuel efficient alcohol stove system, I definitely want to hear about it in the comments down below. Thanks so much again for watching this week, guys. If you found any info that is useful in this video, please give me the thumbs up, share it out to anybody who you think might get value from it. Hit that subscription button if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and click that bell notification if you want to be aware of any new videos that I have coming out. And remember guys, if you're headed off grid, make sure you do your research and you make it a safe one. I'll see you on the next one. Quick uh, little drink break here. I do like Zevia, not sponsored, but um, I really dig the Zevia products. It does a body good. I did it. I actually did it. Oh. Man, I've waited a long time for this one. And that's all, folks.